So this happened when I was around 14 or 15. It was around midday and me and an old friend were hanging out in my childhood bedroom and we happened to be talking about fears and nightmares. I was telling her that I get freaked out by the cupboards above my wardrobe. My wardrobe was built into the wall with small but wide cupboards above. After asking me why it would freak me out so much, I began to explain that it was because I always felt like I was being watched from the right cupboard. I told her how I once had a dream that something or someone lived in there and would come down to observe me in bed and would occasionally sit on my chest. I would usually wake up finding it hard to breathe. I told her how the person was tall and humanoid but had an animalistic behavior and the most terrifying detail, it had no features, no eyes, no mouth, slits for nostrils and weirdly human ears like some sort of aquatic-like skin creature. After telling her this, I was lead on my bed at the time, of which faced in the direction of the cupboard. My eyes were almost immediately drawn to the cupboard, and that's when an inhuman wave of dread and fear washed over me. I started seeing it. The cupboard doors were creaking open and it began to almost spider walk down to the floor before pouncing on my chest. And that's when I realized I was crying. Not a dramatic stream of tears, just silent droplets running down my cheeks. One minute I was drowning in fear, the next everything was fine. My friend now grabbing my shoulders, worry in her eyes, confused. I glanced over to the cupboard, it was shut, with no sign it was ever open. I asked countless times if she'd been seen what had happened, but to her it looked like I started having a panic attack. I had forgotten about it for a while, pushing it to the back of my mind like all the other bad memories. It was only until recently, when I had a similar feeling, that I remembered. Just a disclaim, I have never hallucinated before and have no record of ever doing so. I was perfectly awake and apart from depression and anxiety, I have no other mental illnesses. I'm not really looking for answers, but if anyone can explain, I'd appreciate it. So this happened a few months ago. I was babysitting my baby brother late at night. I'd say around 11. I have a video baby monitor with me almost all the time. Apart from this one time where I left it in my room whilst I went to go get a drink downstairs. Whilst downstairs, I hear a loud crash coming from my parents' room where he sleeps and he's quite young. I also hear him crying. Obviously panicked, I rush up the stairs and find that my brother is sleeping soundly but my parents' TV is on the floor and the screen is cracked. I put it back up and hoped my mum believed me, but I had no idea how it felt. Considering it's quite heavy, on a stable surface, and no cats could get in to knock it over, I was quite confused. Go forward a couple of minutes, I'm in my room, relieved that my brother is safe, and I feel this constant negative energy. Anxiety filled me, and I swear I can feel eyes on me, but I knew no one was home. Soon after my parents return and I tell my mum what happened, she checked my brother and the TV, but found that the TV is fine, and so was my brother. Our McDonald's pre-global panini by several years was a 24-hour store. As my wife worked until 3am and I was on her sleep schedule so she wouldn't be lonely, about 4am we were hungry and decided to grab some food. We ordered and were waiting at the window when we saw this guy walk up. I'm getting the nastiest feeling coming over me. Dread, despair, terror. I wanted to bolt from our car and run for my life. The guy just casually walked to the restaurants and when he passed under the streetlights, I saw this thing floating behind him. It was freaky. About six feet tall, all black except for a large white face. The face had dark sunken eyes and multiple sharp teeth poking up between its lips. It had long arms with clawed hands on the man's shoulders. And below the hips it just dissipated, so no legs. My wife hasn't said anything and usually isn't sensitive to the paranormal, so I didn't expect anything. 
But as the man walked out of the light, the thing vanished from sight, and I heard our car doors lock. I looked at my wife who was pale, with wide eyes. She just goes, tell me you saw that. I confirmed and we just watched the guy continue his walk and into the restaurant. Seeing it was scary. The fact that my wife could was absolutely terrifying. Haven't told my wife since she'd go ballistic. So I'm an insomniac and a pretty late sleeper. Maybe two to three hours on a good day. Well, I was for once asleep. Had been since the night before, which never happens. Suddenly I jarred awake because of this horrific pressure in my chest. My eyes open and I'm looking at my wife standing next to me. Except every part of her is white from her clothes to her hair. Except the eyes, which are bright red. And a freaking hand is in my chest. She gave this creepy smile and squeezes my heart, which starts fluttering in her hand. So besides this initial freak out, I'm like, okay, sleep paralysis. Except then I realize I can freaking move. So I start thrashing against her and sit up and she's still squeezing the life out of me. I look to my right and my actual wife right there asleep and blissfully unaware. I feel the pressure stop and look back and the thing is still there, but she just raises a bloody hand and waves at me and then she's gone. I'm sitting up, scared out my mind and do what any rational person would do and go make tea. Been dealing with paranormal my entire life. I'm so used to it, but this stuff can still get to me a bit. I don't know what that was, except that it wasn't my usual sleep paralysis as it had none of the calling cards I've come to know. I don't know if there's anything that could have been done that we haven't already, and we can't use Christian ideology as that sort of stuff makes me violently ill. I mean, I can't utter a prayer or creed, no crosses or Bibles. I just start spewing until it's removed. So when I, 34 male, was about eight years old, I was woken up to the sound of my little sister vomiting. Of course, this also woke my parents. I remember the whole thing in detail, 98%. I admit that I was still groggy, but I remember my dad yelling my sister's name for some reason. Dad flipped on the hallway light and while laying in bed, I looked out my open bedroom door. I saw a man, full body apparition, wearing a USMC dress uniform. He put a finger to his mouth like one to do a hush to shush someone. I stared at him for what seemed like a minute. It was probably only 10 or 20 seconds. I then turned my head for a brief moment and when I looked back, it was gone. I told my dad about it a few days later but he thought that I made up the whole story. I never knew my paternal grandfather as he died in 1975 but he was drafted to the USMC during World War II. I never even saw a picture of him. Then about 10 years ago, my aunt gave my dad, uncle and grandfather an eight by 10 reprint picture of grandpa. I was in shock. The man that I saw all those years ago was my grandfather. It was the exact same uniform, the same facial features, everything. I didn't mention this to my dad or the rest of my family. So this didn't happen to me, but my close friend's little cousin. Let's call her A. She was five years old at the time and I remember hearing about how her mom used to have encounters with the paranormal often. But as she got older, she shut them out. So I guess these talents were passed on to her daughter. One day A was playing while her uncle B was watching her. He asked her who she was playing with and she said it was her imaginary friend. It's not unnatural for our kids to have imaginary friends, so B didn't think much of it. What A didn't know is that many years ago when B was a child, he had a friend named Corey. B and Corey were having a play date and Corey borrowed a pair of B's shoes. When Corey went home, he was still wearing B's shoes and he died in a car crash. B decided to leave the shoes on and buy Corey in them out of respect. 
Little Ellie had never been told this information as she was only five years old. This is the chilling part. She continues to talk about her imaginary friend and B is engaging with her until A stops, looks at B and says, his name is Corey. He says he's sorry he still has your shoes. And this is not the only time I've heard stories like this from my friend, the cousin of A. A is now probably 13 or so, and I wonder if she still has these abilities. My grandmother lived with us for a few years, and when she would visit, she stayed in our guest bedroom. Because of old age, she had trouble going up the stairs, so we installed a stair lift. My grandma hated when anyone beside her used it, and being 10 or 11 years old, my friends and I thought it was fun, and they always wanted to use it. My grandma passed when I was 13. On my next birthday, 14, my friends all came over for my birthday party, and everyone lined up to use the stair lift. Since my grandma had passed away, it was no longer in use, and I figured, why not let my friends use it? I was standing at the top of the stairs, my friends at the bottom, with one person going up the stairs on the lift, with a ceramic framed painting suddenly jumped off the wall and shattered. It was right outside the room my grandma always stayed in. It was a painting hung in a way that you had to lift up off a wire in order to take it down, Add, adding that the nail was at a sloped angle. Basically, there was no way gravity could have been the cause of the fall. I like to think it was my grandma coming back to say, don't use my stair lift, because it was something that truly bothered her. Either way, it wasn't scary, but comforting, knowing that she was still around, looking out for and watching us. This basically happened between 96 to 2002. I would assume closer to the 2000 mark when I was about four or five years old. Now that I say that, I'm not sure due to hearing about stuff like sleep paralysis, but I'll let you judge for yourself. What would happen is every night when I was in my bed, I would always end up getting dragged from it and end up on the floor. Remembering it, I always thought I'd be safe on my bed. I have no idea what difference it would make. But no matter how much I fought, I would always end up on the floor. Now this happened every night. I can't remember when it began or when it ended. I'd assume when my family moved house, but every night I would get dragged from my bed and on some occasions I would hear a lot of voices as if I was in a crowded room. I also remember once hearing someone yeehaw like a cowboy. It proper scared the shit out of me every time. I would shout for my mum loads of times and she would never come, so that's what makes me feel like it was a dream. Although she could have been ho hoping I'd just go back to sleep. The one thing I never did, which I don't know if I regret or I'm glad I didn't do, was actually turn to look at what was scaring me. I guess I thought it wouldn't hurt me if I didn't look or something, lol. To start off, I haven't gotten much sleep for the past few months. My insomnia has gotten really bad, and my doctor's as if I'm medication seeking when I ask for help. Anyway, the house I am in currently, I know for a fact has some kind of beings living in this big hedge in the backyard. They've been seen all around the house though. I saw one on a snowy day run from behind my neighbor's parked RV to behind one of those weird trees that looks like a bunch of skinny trees just growing from the same spot. I'm not sure the name of the specific type of tree, but the main point is you can see through the other side pretty easily because the, between the little trunks. Anyway, I saw what appeared to be a fat little man, about a foot tall run from the RV to behind the tree. So without breaking eye contact with the tree in case wherever it was ran, I walked over to see if I could find footprints or something in case it was a rabbit, etc. I go to it and of course there's no footprints, nothing in the tree, not even a rabbit or squirrel. I knew what it was, but I just decided to leave it be and went back inside. A few months later, my little brother saw the same looking thing running between two of the same types of tree mentioned above, just on the other side of my house. All he said was it just looked like a tiny roundish man running, 
definitely on two legs. And again, no footprints. It was muddy that day. So if it was an animal, there should have been. It seems to me like they used those specific trees as some kind of portal or entryway to something. So that's the first being I had questions about. The second has been a lot more recently. And it's why I mentioned at first that I have insomnia because that very well could be what the cause of this was. Our minds are fragile things when not being cared for properly. Within the last month or so, I've seen this thing in my living room. I sleep in my living room because I have too much anxiety to sleep in the back end of my house. Because I have babies and if something were to happen, I feel like I wouldn't hear them. Both times I've seen this figure, I've been laying in bed trying to sleep. I'll roll over and look up my brick fireplace and I'll see this tiny little humanoid type thing run for a split second. But it's not fast. It seems like it's a slow motion echo of a child running. I'm not very good at describing things, but I will try. It was transparent, but I could make out what seemed like bones. It honestly looked like an x-ray or ultrasound of a child. It was like a sheer white color, like a ghostly skeleton in a way. It had a disproportionately large head and a tiny body. It couldn't have been more than 10 inches tall. As I mentioned before, it looked like I just saw a slow motion flash of this thing running. It just kind of dissipated after I saw it. I've seen this thing twice now in almost the same spot. The spots are maybe five to 10 inches away from each other. I saw it the first time almost a month ago, then last night as well. First some background. I live in Melbourne, Australia, and my boyfriend was driving home around 6 p.m. after picking up dinner. I was sitting in the passenger seat as always. We both were watching the road as it was wet and dark. It started pouring with rain and my partner held my hand, romantic I know, as he drove home. This was only a short trip and wasn't supposed to turn into anything large. A second after we started holding hands, out of nowhere came this bright shining light right next to the passenger side where I was sitting. It was a figure taller than his car. He has a Holden Colorado for reference, pretty much a big truck. It was almost like someone walking next to the car. However, it came out the middle of nowhere. There were cars surrounding us and we had the headlights on, so we would have seen it coming. We were going about 65 or 70 kilometers an hour for reference. Here's the weird part. This six, seven foot tall figure had a shining light as its face and a blue long sleeve shirt on. It was almost walking into the car. We both saw it. We both immediately reacted thinking we just hit someone or a cyclist because it had a headlight. Then it disappeared. Looking in the reverse mirrors, there was no light or figure. We were both so shocked and had both experienced shivers as we saw it try to make sense of what it was. Because we both saw it, we felt spooked. Originally, I thought it was some weirdo who was walking on the road, but we would have hit him and he came out of nowhere. I kept looking at the road and footpaths and saw two walkers clearly visible 20 meters down the road. This is what a normal walker would have looked like. So we think we have a ghost. Would love to know if anyone has any explanations. To start this story, I'm gonna give you a little background information. The room these events had taken place in is my room at my grandparents' house. When I was younger, I hated sleeping in that room. And if I slept in there, my grandma would stay with me. So when I first came to live with them, I stayed downstairs on the couch until my grandma cleaned her room upstairs. She moved into the room across the hall and I was told I could stay in my room. I was hesitant, because there's always been this off feeling about that room and the basement. I refused to go to the basement, but this is my room and my grandma was just going to be right across the hall. So I decided it could be all right. It started out fine. I noticed some weird things about a week after I moved back up in there. In the morning, the chair that kept my closet door closed would be turned slightly and the door would be ajar. It freaked me out 
but I shrugged it off because I knew my grandparents wouldn't, wouldn't believe me or tell me I'm being crazy. This happened multiple mornings in a row for weeks. I decided to put a heavy box in front of the chair to hunker it down in place. It worked, but then that was when the bumps from the foot of the bed started. It would normally happen at around one or two in the morning. Bumps like, bumps like someone ran into the bed. They started happening often too. It really freaked me out, but again, I shrugged it off because I didn't want my grandparents to think I was insane. About a week or so of enduring the bumps, the pressure started. It felt like a cat was walking on the bed. That light, but it feels like hands and not feet or paws. I wouldn't even be writing this, but last night was horribly frightening. I went to bed early, about nine o'clock, and my grandparents were in the basement's living room. It was fine up there for about an hour, and then the bumps to the bed started within minutes of me turning my phone light off. It was about three to five separate bumps, like when you go fishing and you pull the line back slightly to taunt the fish for a bite. It was like it was taunting and teasing me. I stayed completely still and the pressure near my legs started. It felt, it didn't feel comforting. It was scary and not evil, but not nice. I started praying in my head, Lord Jesus, thou art in heaven, Please protect me from any harmful or evil entities within this space. Amen. I repeated this over and over again. Then I started feeling a second pressure over near my face. It should be known that I sleep with the covers over my head and earphones in, so I did not hear or see anything. I could feel the pressure on the blanket near my face. My face tinkled with energy. I kept repeating my prayer. I wanted to call out to my grandparents, but I was frozen in fear. Finally, after some time, the pressure near my face left. I got the courage then to move, and that was when the pressure near my feet left. I would like a normal explanation for this, but it's so odd, I can't really think of anything. It scares me that this is starting to happen, and I have no idea how to stop it. It was evening on Christmas day, around 2012. I'm around 16 or 17. And my mum and I are driving back home after spending Christmas day with our extended family in Greater London. Me and mum lived alone with our dog, Pika. We're just chatting away about Christmas. Then the conversation moved on to Santa Claus and we started talking about other mythical holiday creatures such as the Easter bunny and tooth fairy. We talked for a while about how when I was young, my mum used to keep my baby teeth in a small jar with a blue fairy on top, very similar to this one. And I always remembered this jar from my childhood, but I hadn't seen it for many years. I remembered that last time I had seen it, it was partly wrapped in black duct tape, obviously to stop it falling over. And if I had to estimate when this was, I would say several years before, probably around the time we were moving house and were packing around 2007, five years prior. We spoke for a while about baby teeth in this jar, my mum also stating that she hadn't seen it for a long time and hoped it wasn't lost during the process of our house move. I remember even saying that I thought it was a bit gross that my mum had kept all my teeth in the first place and that they're just sitting in the house somewhere. Anyway, this conversation went on for a while and then we moved on to talking about something else. We arrived home shortly after walked in the front door and greeted my dog as usual. My mum walks into the kitchen and I follow immediately behind her. And there on the floor of the kitchen is the small jar, opened in two pieces and all these tiny baby teeth over the floor. My first reaction was to think that my mom was trying to spook me, although she has literally never played a prank on me in my whole life. But then I saw her face and realized she definitely wasn't. She immediately freaks out and starts ringing everyone she knows to tell them what's happened. My dog Pika was pretty old at this point, maybe 11 years, and was very docile when we'd leave the house. She literally would never go rummaging through belongings or anything like that. It wouldn't really be possible anyway as most stuff is kept in drawers cupboards that she couldn't access.
When I was younger, I used to be obsessed with ghosts and all sorts of haunting shows. Now, I'd never particularly had a reason to believe my house was haunted, but one day my brother came home claiming to have found $10 out of nowhere. I'll never know for sure if he was just messing with me, but after curiosity got the best of me, I asked him where we really got the $10 from. Stupid me assumed maybe a friend. Perhaps he stole it from my parents' wallet. My parents never claimed to have been missing any money, however. Something they would definitely have voiced distraught about if they'd noticed we'd taken their cash. The story he gave me was that a young girl, about the age of seven, had followed him into, onto the school bus that afternoon. He'd never met this girl and had never seen her around at school, but she decided to sit in the seat in front of him. After riding the bus for a little while, she started to talk to him. Nobody else could see her according to him, and other kids were giving him looks. Eventually, she handed him ten dollars with a note and then subsequently got off the bus at the next stop. I immediately assumed he was lying and laughed of course. I asked him to show me the note which he promptly pulled out from his room and passed me a tiny piece of paper. A shiver ran down my spine as the note wasn't in his handwriting, but in the handwriting of what I could only assume to be a young child that read, I'll help you, but only this time. Which I believe was in response to the fact that my brother was begging my parents for a Zelda charm bracelet for months, which they refused to buy him. Given that he had $10 now, he could just buy it himself though. Of course, me being me was extremely intrigued by this, even if it seemed absurd. I suggested we make a sh makeshift Ouija board and see if we can contact anyone. So we wrote the alphabet on a piece of paper and grabbed a necklace to hover above the DIY board. My brother was interested too, so we decided it could be fun. Mind you, I was in sixth grade and he was in fourth at the time, so any sort of movement from the necklace caught our attention and we immediately thought it was a ghost. After asking a few questions, the necklace began to move and shake. Either my brother was really good at tricking me by slowly sliding the necklace across the board, or it was really was something paranormal. We were able to get a name, Kate. After asking dumb things like, do you watch me complete the Shadow Temple in Ocarina of Time? And getting a yes, me and my brother decided to stop for the night after being creeped out. We'd never said goodbye before ending though. Eventually, playing with the board would be a daily occurrence. We'd thought we'd made a friend and truly believed that someone was talking to us. Me and my brother decided to take things a step further and try to record something. So, we got both our tablets, placed them in front of our TV and hit record. The first thing I asked was, if someone's here, move something in the room. Nothing. Okay, well, maybe a ghost is shy. We decided to ask the same question, but this time we said we'll leave the room to give it time. We went downstairs for five minutes, and when we got back upstairs, our tablets had both fallen to the floor and stopped recording. Maybe a coincidence? I mean, things fall, especially when you're not careful of placing them, so we brushed it off. In December of sixth grade though, things got weird. I'd started hearing voices in my head claiming that they were the ghost I was talking to while playing the Ouija board. I'd gotten so scared one night, I'd grabbed the Bible one of my religious friends had gifted me, I'm not religious, and would sleep with it. Eventually, I told my mom that there was a ghost telling me scary things. I won't go into detail as some of this was a little graphic. She and my dad argued for a while about whether or not I was schizophrenic and if I should see a therapist. So, out of fear, I never told them I was hearing voices again. But I'd space out, often talking and having conversations with this thing I believed to be a ghost. Eventually, I forgot about the ghost and we'd no longer talked. I will never know what that voice was, if I was genuinely insane, if they were just intrusive thoughts. I was just glad for it to have stopped. Nothing necessarily paranormal has happened to me since besides my TV turning on randomly in the middle of the night, or the feeling of someone pushing my legs with some sort of unknown force every once in a while. I sum it up just to my imagination playing tricks on me now, but I do still have this looming feeling that ever since I've played with that Ouija board, I have some sort of spirit attached to me, following me. Not a bad one, but just 
a looming presence. I experienced a terrifying haunting for months when I was 18 years old, still living, at, still living at my parents' house. This story could be useful for anyone reckless enough to dabble in the occult without protecting yourself. For context, it was the month of February, a cold, dark Canadian winter. I was between two sessions of uni, switching programs, so I had f a full four months with nothing to do. I just broke up with my batshit crazy borderline girlfriend tried to leave her after six months of abusive relations and she tried to kill herself, which she succeeded since she died twice at the hospital. She miraculously survived after weeks in a coma. I was left scarred and traumatized, angry and bitter at life because I really wanted this relationship and did everything I could to help her in vain. She leached and sucked out every possible positive vibe I had. Anyway, it's another subject, but it's important since I felt so dark and my energy was negative in this period of my life. I dabbed in the occult at this moment, still, still skeptical but determined by all means to prove to myself that it was all real. Read the Keys of Solomon, researched about many demons, famous cases, incantations and the occult in general. One night after focusing on Solomon, I asked out loud in my room to prove me it was all real. I'm not kidding when I tell you that activity started the same night. Closed the light, went under the cover. I felt a weight at my feet sitting on my bed. I was shook, but still under the impression I was just too into it and hallucinating. From there, it went from bad to worse. I started to hear whispers in my room, like two people hushing to each other. My dog, who always slept with me, would wake up frightened as soon as I would close the light and leave my room growling. It would always start with the weight, then whispers, then stuff being knocked out off my counters. If I would put a pillow on my ears, I would feel it lift from my ears, like a hand pulling it from my head. I started to sleep with earplugs. I would hear scratching inside my mattress and my bed would slightly shake. My fan was knocked on the ground and it culminated to both my closet doors opening violently. I would feel so oppressed. I could feel that something bad was going to happen, then bang. I was terrified to go to sleep and I would feel the opposite energy start as soon as it would get dark. I was under the impression the parasites that I invited in were here to frighten me and leech on me. I'd never had sleep paralysis except once in this bedroom after a dream where a possessed priest was standing on my bed his hands cuffed by a chain on the ceiling and screaming. I was there to fight him and I saw the spirit left its body and it went straight for me. I got paralyzed against my closet doors and felt it trying to creep inside. I woke up paralyzed, trying to move out and broke off it. It lasted for months and tried to cleanse my room and nothing would work. I left my parents' house and was terrified it would follow me. It didn't, thank God. Be safe and careful everyone. Don't invite anything and do not open doors you don't know how to close. I grew up in the same house since I was three years old and only moved to a new house about a year ago. A few creepy things happened in the years I lived there and here are three short experiences before one longer one. When I was in elementary school, there was a bump under the carpet where my closet doors used to be. I asked my parents about it and they told me it was probably just warped wood, but I was convinced it was a dead person and nobody could tell me otherwise. Ever since I can remember, I have felt a pressure on the foot of my bed before I fall asleep. The same sensation as someone walking or standing on your bed while you lie in it. I chalked it up to an overactive imagination. But ever since my family moved to this new house and I moved into my college dorms, I've not experienced the same sensation. When I was in middle school, I was getting ready for bed per usual. The way our old house is set up is a stairway leading up to a balcony looking over the living room and a long hallway leading to the only three bedrooms and a bathroom in the middle. I was walking towards the bathroom by the balcony. I turned and saw a large dark shadow jump from the balcony. 
I ran to the edge and looked down, thinking it was my brother or my dad. Nothing was at the bottom, and my dad walked out from his room and asked me what I was doing. I replied with a shocked, nothing. Maybe a year or two later, I was sitting in bed late at night, texting my friends as preteens do. My bed was a twin size with a mold metal frame and these wooden boards on the bottom to hold the mattress. I felt someone push hard up on the wooden boards and mattress. I heard the boards impact on the metal frame. This scared the absolute crap out of me. It took me about 10 minutes to get the courage to look under my bed, rationalizing it as a prank my older brother was playing on me. When I looked under, nothing was there. I kept the lights on that night. A little explanation of my room in the house I grew up in. I lived on the top right corner of the house. Two windows, a wall shared with my parents' room. My closet wall connected to my brother's room and two walls facing the outside, each with a window. We only had one tree in the front yard of which I was nowhere close to and my neighbors had a tree in their backyard also unable to reach my room. I am also, if it wasn't clear, on the second floor of the house. Keep this in mind. I was in high school sitting in bed one night, staying up late. I was about to fall asleep when I heard this long, loud, slow scratching on my wall facing the street. It begins at the wall separating me from my parents' room, continued and ended up at where the closet started. It went back and forth probably three or four times and stopped. It started at exactly 11 o'clock. It scared the piss out of me, but I tried to chalk it up to mice. The same thing happened again the following night at the exact same time. This time there was a shadow in the window. I always kept my blinds closed since the street lights lit up my entire room. So you can imagine my horror when I looked at the window to see the well-defined shadow of some kind of creature as the sound of the long, terrible scratch filled my ears. I didn't move. I blinked and the shadow was gone and the scratching stopped. My heart was pounding out of my chest as I prayed to God to save me. The next night, I was over it. I put salt on the windows and hung a cross on the drawstring of the blinds. I stayed up until 11 waiting for the scratching. It never came and I haven't heard it since. I can't rationalize this one. I want to get rid of every possibility of a situation before I blame ghosts. But I just can't explain this one.